that we have Mariam on. And so Mariam, if you want to go ahead and uh, put your video on and uh, be ready to speak. There she is. Hello, hello. Hi, okay, hi how are you? <laughs> good. I'm going to hand it off to you now. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. What a wonderful group of people to be a part of. This is a great community. I'm very excited to be part of this community. As Mercedes said, my name is Miriam, Miriam Saradari, and I will give you a little bit of background about myself before I get into what I do now. I am a trained and registered art therapist. And for those who may not be familiar with that, it is psychotherapy using art materials as a way of communicating with the clients. I worked in the field for a very long time and I really enjoy the creative aspect of things, which um, I will do a little something about later for you. But through a series of events, my path took a little turn and now I coach but i refer to my coaching style as transformational interchangeably with <laughs> empowerment coaching and it has a bit of a spiritual bent not religious but spiritual like many of the panelists uh, i also came out of the uh, spiritual closet several years ago and have been part of this i guess seeker community for a, for a while, and I really love all things metaphysical. So the kind of coaching that I do is geared toward empowerment to get you to connect with your superpower, I guess. But I also like all things magical. Yes, I know. <laughs> all things can be magical. I love um, all things related to it. So my programs have this fantastical element that using the symbology of mythical creature, sometimes I get you to go inward and connect with that magician inside. Um, series of meditations and different tasks that would help you get there couple of programs that I offer are both geared toward bringing out the insight from within. As Mercedes mentioned, I also facilitate this specific um, energetic healing modality called reconnective healing. And this is funny because I had never really considered offering this. I had received Reiki before and I had really enjoyed it and um, had never imagined actually offering that until, again, a series of synchronistic events led me to a lecture on reconnective healing, and it just seemed like it was tailor-made for me. <laughs> Everything that I heard about it connected. So needless to say, I trained in that as well, and I have been facilitating ever since. It's been over four years that I've been doing this, and I love it. I love it very much. So that being said, I would like to demonstrate a little something that all who are watching can actually try for themselves. To bring your hands a few inches apart, it doesn't matter how far apart they are, just enough that you can manipulate them in front of you. Now, imagine two rubber bands sort of having a connection between both hands of yours, as if you have rubber bands that keep them connected to each other. Now, imagine stretching this rubber band. Just move your hands away from one another you can just play around a little bit, move your palms around and just stretch farther and then bring them back close. 
just like that. Yeah, I guess the camera doesn't show me. <laughs> so as you're doing this, just you can either close your eyes or you can just really tune into the sensation that you might be picking up on. Some people say that it feels like a little electricity. Some say it's like buzzing, tingling, perhaps warmth, any of those, any kind of sensation that might you, you know, you might feel in your hands, those are all valid. And as you stretch your hands farther apart, see how you feel. Should be kind of feeling like a little bit as if the rubber band is sort of <laughs> stretching your hands, yeah. So this is the field that the reconnective feeling is working with. And the interesting about it is the farther you stretch this out, the stronger it gets, which is a little bit counterintuitive, if you will. But this is the field, and this is the field I work within. It surrounds us all, and we can all tap into it. It's not something that only I have access to. We all do, you all do. And the good thing about reconnective healing is that you don't really need a specific technique in order to tap into this or channel it through. So I invite you today, later, if you get a moment, just play around a little bit with this. And, you know, if you've got pets at home or you have somebody at home, just try it on them a little bit. Um, animals usually love this. They love the energy. So it's really fun. I try it on my cats <laughs> and I'm pretty convinced they can see the energy because they look at my hands like, what are you doing? <laughs> what is this? And then they start purring after a minute. So um, it's kind of fun to do that. So this is basically reconnective healing, um, which can be done just like other healing modalities can be done over distance or in person. It does not take away from the um, potency of what you receive. The only thing is to just allow it to come through because you are in fact the healer. The one who receives is the one who allows the healing in. So you are the healer. And this is reconnective healing. So if you all want to experience this, give me a shout out and we'd set something up. Now, I talked about the creativity aspect. I love still doing artwork and I still use that as a way to relax. But a uh, um, little while back, I did mention that I have come out of the wool closet. So a little while back, I, I was doing these um, paintings for myself, you know, just, you know, doing some angel paintings and I was having fun. And I sort of sensed that I was being guided to uh, bring them out as offerings. And it took me a little while to really trust what I was picking up on. And um, once I decided, I got further <laughs> Uh, guidance that I would be charging them and tuning them to whoever is commissioning me for that. So it was basically, I'm just the guide. I I'm the channel. I just, <laughs> you um, just, just bring it through, but everything else just comes through. So I had to kind of, took me a while to get my ego out of the way and now I've been doing these uh, angel paintings with the messages that are specific to the person who has asked for them. And I have a few to show you here. This is one that I've just finished. And the message is, the soul whispers through the heart, open it and listen. The only thing I control with these angels are the colors. So um, this is the only thing that I ask about, the preference of colors. Otherwise, everything else is sort of out of my hands. Even the way the angel looks, this is one of my own. Mine just wanted to have her eyes closed. 
And I have another one of mine as well. It's a, you know, angel of community. And this one says, and she knew she had finally found her tribe. And isn't that the truth? <laughs> Here I am. And this one says, let your inner light shine. So this is what I also do, which I really, really enjoy. I'm happy to answer any questions now if anybody wants to jump on and, and ask me something. <laughs> I invite you to do that. We do have some questions, but in the meantime, I wanted to show mine. I love this. The soul speaks through the heart, keep it open. And it just rubbed it against my legs. So that kind of came off there. Um, anyway, I love this and I cried when I got it. And it was just, it meant so much to me. So thanks Miriam for that. My pleasure. I loved working on it. So how does, um, how does it feel to get a healing session with you? Do you, do you touch, do you, do you touch somebody? Um, what types of things does your healing session actually heal? Is it emotional, okay. physical? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. Um, healing, energetic healing uh, works on several different levels. And with reconnective healing specifically, it is preferred not to have a particular expectation. And I usually don't ask any clients to tell me ahead of time what they're there for, because the frequencies are intelligent and they know what the client needs at the time they come to see me. So we do process afterwards, but this is a uh, this is a modality that is not touch based, no physical touching. I don't touch anyone. However, it works on physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual levels. It goes to the DNA level and it changes it. So each session is individual. To the person and even if one person comes twice or three times each time they're going to experience something different and i suspect that it is very much similar in all energetic you know healings it's usually very individualized um so what has been observed after a reconnective healing session is that synchronicities tend to increase. <laughs> it's kind of like an evolutionary thing. Synchronicities increase, uh, things pop up that are either emotional or just, you know, like some memory suddenly comes up. Dreams get very vivid. And the frequencies also continue working on the client several days after the session has ended. So it doesn't really end with the session. It just kind of keeps going for a while. So my real answer to that would be, if you really want to experience what reconnective healing is like, to just come and experience it. Because I can describe it all day long and it's still not gonna feel you know, personal to you. So come and experience it for yourselves. <laughs> That's interesting in that it sounds like you may not physically feel something depending on what you're trying to heal, but that you'll have those different experiences that provide insight into your, your future path. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's correct. And sometimes with the clients themselves, you know, um, they actually, if they stay present, while the session is happening, they sometimes have re reported uh, hearing things, smelling things, um, actually seeing like angels or loved ones. Although you have your eyes closed, you kind of get a sense of who is that in the corner of the room? You know, these things have happened and um, they experience that. That's why I don't have any sounds when I off make offerings or ha don't have anything that might have 
uh, smell because you don't want to take away from the experience of the individual. So, you know, these things also do happen. And sometimes I pick up stuff too. Um, it's not the highly encouraged as a, you know, like in the community of reconnective healing to sort of go on the woo-woo side <laughs> as if, you know, as if energetic healing is not woo-woo enough. But uh, when I do get messages, I definitely share because they're there for the client. So um, this has happened quite a few times as well. That's great. It sounds like it opens somebody up up to connect to their um, higher self, to connect to their clairs, to see and experience and develop their intuition. Right. Um, we do have a couple questions um, for you or additional Great. questions. From a psychological perspective, um, does this boost recovery for mental illness? I would say yes. Um, and again, I would say don't come in, come in with the mindset that this has to specifically be the thing that works on you that day because you limit what you receive in other aspects. It kind of limits you. So yes, it doesn't have any negative side effects, if you will, nothing whatsoever. It only works with the highest frequency of uh, love. So um, it's going to have a positive effect. If you have some issues, psychological issues, it's definitely going to help it, not hinder it. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> I think so. So you're saying um, anything in your life, if you're trying to recover or grow, that it the only thing it'll do is help you, yes, um, yes. but it will it it aids in boosting your ability to heal. Yes, heal yourself. Absolutely. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So how does somebody prepare for, for your session? How do they get mentally and physically ready um, to be in that state to receive? Actually, the only, the only thing you need to do is to really be open to receiving. Just, you know, if you have made the decision that you want to experience this, you've already given me permission to connect with your field. So all I would ask you to just really just be open to receiving. Don't feel like you have to keep a certain mental state or you have to chant mantras as, you know, while I'm working with you or you have to like, you know, do some sort of ceremonial thing beforehand that would prepare you better. You are enough. That's all that's needed. Your willingness to just allow to receive is all that's needed. That's it. That's the only thing you need to do. How about anxiety? Um, what advice would you have for us, you know, around reducing anxiety? How could we use um, your healing techniques to do that? I actually, um, well, reconnective healing most certainly helps with that. But if you want to have a tool, a little tool to take away with you, I can actually show you a, uh, this is what I use uh, in some of my coaching too. It's called tapping, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard about. I can show you a sequence that works really well um, to lower anxiety. And this is also energetic and also works on the meridian points, which are your natural uh, centers of healing in your body. So what you want to do is you take your hand, this is the karate chop point, as it's referred to. Let's say you're feeling anxious. Uh, if we were to gauge that from scale of one to 10, let's say you're eight. And what you want to do is you first affirm even though I'm feeling very anxious, I still love and accept myself. You want to repeat that three times. Even though I'm feeling anxiety on a very high scale, I still completely love and accept myself. Even though I'm very anxious, I still love and accept myself. You want to always start with an affirmation because 
it's okay to feel that. You don't want to be questioning, why am I feeling this way? You know, there are different reasons we feel what we feel. So we want to validate the emotion first. Now, you start with the end eyebrow endpoints. You can either do with two fingers here or you can go like that. I usually just do it like this. So you sort of tap on these, not enough to give you a headache, but you just want to like feel it. And you just bring up, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling anxious. I'm really anxious. And then you come to the sort of the end of the, this, the end of the eyebrows on the eye sockets on this bone over here. And you just say anxious, anxious, anxious. Then you come down again, still on the bone here, anxious, anxious, anxious. There you go right here, anxious, anxious, anxious. Right under the lips, anxious, anxious, anxious. Now you come down to these collarbones right here, you see your collarbones here, right under it, you tap under there, you say anxious, anxious, anxious. And the reason you keep repeating that is because while you're tapping and you're getting the endorphins released into the body and you want to neutralize the anxious feeling. So when you say anxious and you're doing this, it's kind of neutralizing what you're feeling. And then you go under your arms, this is for the ladies that bra line here, anxious, <laughs> anxious, I'm feeling anxious. And then on top of your head, you go anxious, anxious, anxious. Now you close your eyes and take a deep breath. Then come back and gauge and see if it has shifted at all. And you can repeat the pattern several times in order to bring down your anxiety. Sometimes I do this before I start coaching with someone or while, you know, in one of the sessions, you know, they, they talk about feeling either having a headache or feeling, you know, whatever. This works on all the levels. So you can just have this as a little tool to just do this for yourselves. Awesome. Um, we have another question, then something just popped up. Okay. Um, sorry. It's all right. So what would you say to somebody who is thinking about reconnective healing, but they're not sure if this is the right modality for them? What I can say is, um, you know, do some reading on it first, just do a little more reading on this. And if that still doesn't quite answer your query, just uh, schedule a session and experience it. There is no harm done with that. There is no negative side effects. And if you didn't really connect with that, it's okay. You won't, you won't repeat it. <laughs> that would be what I would do. Right. I mean, to add to that, and one of the things that we're doing at Soul Connects is we go through a pretty heavy vetting process for our practitioners. So I've known Miriam uh, for several years. We're in the same uh, meditation group and I've experienced her healing as well. One, so just kind of walk through that. But my point is that you should trust um you can trust that we've already been skeptical for you because we've gone through this process with the practitioners to make sure that they um provide a good customer experience that they understand their craft that that you can just be comfortable with your decision in selecting the practitioners so Miriam is one of them. She was in fact our first one who joined. So, so excited about that. Um, but just to quickly walk through that and feel free to keep asking questions um, in the chat while I'm, while I'm jabbering here. Um, but we have a first a consult with our practitioners and see if it's a good fit. If it's, if we're helping with their growth goals that there's ethics um, there, how they treat their clients. 
And then secondly, we do a full on interview, just like you're interviewing for a job, um, asking them behavioral questions. What happens if a client isn't happy? What happens if um, you have a struggle with um, something? Just asking them those behavioral questions, as well as from a technical standpoint, if they understand what their modality is, that they've been educated properly. And then last, we have them do a session for us as if we're a client. So we receive a healing session or a reading or a coaching session, depending on the modality. Um, so, and then last, we do a background check. So, um, so that should give people a lot of comfort that we are going through those steps so that you don't have to. It's finding the services that um, resonate with you that can help you the most um, and then selecting the practitioners from there um, and so I'm so very grateful for Miriam to be part of our team. Thank you. It's my honor. I'm very excited any, to be a part of this group very much. Thanks. Um, any other things you'd like to mention before we transition to the next practitioner? What I want to say is you know, we all sometimes need help and are, there are many ways of treatment. However, um, in the Western medicine, not to put that down, but I've come to see that it mainly concentrates on the treatment aspect. However, the healing isn't addressed as much. And this whole group in, on this panel is a group of healers that are here to help you, whether it's coaching services or the energetic healing services. This is a different kind of approach to helping you become more powerful and take charge of your own uh, issues and your own lives in the best way that we've, we know how to offer it. So I would say to really seek, seek the ways that empower you to uh, address the whole you, not just one aspect of you. Thank you, Great. Miriam. <laughs> Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, that is Miriam, and uh, thank you so much for being with us at this point.